is a Samsung SyncMaster F2380 23 inch uh, computer monitor. Uh, this thing dates from about 2010 and uh, it's a PVA monitor and probably one of the last new uh, CCFL backlit monitors to hit the market. Uh, this particular one seems to have a rather rough life and it's got an ABB logo tanked to the front so this has probably been used as some sort of industrial automation type display device, meaning it's probably got about one million display hours behind it. So, I haven't powered this on yet, I have no idea what's wrong with it, if anything, but regardless of what happens, we're going to take it apart because I'm really curious to see what's inside such a high-end monitor. They retail for uh, over $300 back then, and supposedly they have very good picture quality perhaps even by today's standards, depending on how worn out the backlight is. And probably the power supply in Samsung, so this era, yeah, bad caps. So let's just jump straight to the point and uh, give it some power. 230 volts comes in there. Power on back there, let's give it some juice. And it did charge the primary side cap. It was drawn with pulse of power. Now the power button seems to be doing nothing. None of the buttons do anything. So it seems to be entirely dead. Uh, although we do know we have a good uh, uh, primary side circuit since it did it draw a peak of power, uh, main, uh, meaning that it did charge the primary side cap. So fuse is good, power switch is on. Now we have some internal faults, so let's get this thing apart and see what happens. Oh, and we're also probably not dealing with an inverter fault since it's not turning on at all. If this were an inverter fault, we would probably hear it starting, see some distorted image or reddish image, and it would just hiss at us and die afterwards. So I'm thinking probably bad capacitors, uh, logic supply. That's my bet. So let's get inside and see if that's true. Bit of a beauty to have a hit open there, it says, and it just snaps off, making horrible noises. There we go. One of these horrible uh, forks and vase and mains where they've just replaced a couple of the screws with a couple of latches just in order to make sure you cannot reuse the main for anything else uh, if a monitor fails. A rendering is rather useless, but uh, you can always uh, grind these off, drill a couple of holes, and reuse it anyway. So we have got a rather different design than usual on these. The back plate here seems to be snapped into the front bezel, so we're going to have to attack this from behind, uh, which is a good thing because it's going to leave less uh, visible marks on the monitor. Let's see where we can work our way inside. Finally inside. So it's a pretty typical layout. OSDQ there, nice big shielding plate for the CCFL wiring there. Going to the inverter board and if we have a look inside there we can I can't see any obvious issues but we're gonna take this whole assembly out and see what we have. So CCFLs come out like so. This weird metal thing isn't attached to anything. A piece of tape of the LVDS cable comes off. LVDS cable comes out. Control panel cable comes out. And this unit is liberated. I am suspecting logic caps. And whoa, that's run hard time. We've got bad caps. No one's surprised, let's replace these guys. Uh, actually, decently rated Samyang ones. Uh, surprised to see these fail, but these diodes have run so hot. Jeez, that is. That is not good. I think they're doing that horrible thing. Yes, they are. Well, they're just running a bunch of diodes in parallel with no equalization at all. This is a bad design and very common in, in modern devices.
All right, and there we have our reworked board. So, thus far the repair has taken just under half an hour, including my rambling and the installation of some rather silly looking heat sinks on both the output diodes, there are the switching plates of light, and the inverted rather, which resides underneath there. So, uh, this is actually keeping uh, up with being a reasonably economic repair, even if this were to be done by a professional shop for a customer. So, uh, it's time we get that to pay supply back into the monitor and seeing if it powers up. Uh, I'm hoping uh, we don't have CCFL trouble, uh, because if we do, this thing is a uh, rip. Alright, I've got it uh, put back together. Uh, it's just lying flat down on its face, so there's nothing to see uh, except for the power it draws. So we're looking for a difference in the behaviour. Previously, it uh, charged the primary cap and then did nothing. Uh, if it's fixed, then it's gonna do the same thing, uh, sit for a bit, and then start drawing more power as it hums back to life. So let's flip the switch and see what happens. Now we have the charging with primary cap, and it's humming to life, drawing food for watts, and I do think this is going to be a fix. Let's flip it on its back and see if we get image. Alright, here comes the moment of truth. Power. We have no signal connected though, but it should light up. Oh yeah, it's light up. Searching for signal and not going to find any. Let's uh, give it some and see if we're going to get proper image and if it's going to be all horribly red tinted and uh, ruined as it all too often is on high hour CCFL backlit displays. And there we go. We have got a cosmic Anna on our panel and it's not looking. Entirely horrible, even. Let's uh, have a look in the menu, see if perhaps this guy has got an hour comb to each side of the service menu. I'm thinking probably not. Oh, ho, ho, holy crap, has this thing got hours? 66,635. That's ridiculous. Now, I'm a bit confused because I do think I have a venerable old uh, 225W and its uh, friends uh, used to give you a separate power on and panel hour count because 66,635 hours on the panel does sound like too much. I would have expected a more serious failure at that point, so I think that might be the time it's been sitting plugged into the wall. But then again, industrial service this thing's probably been through could be that's actual panel hours. Now, the panel does have a rather low light output, it's not very bright, uh, even on a hundred percent brightness, despite drawing quite a bit of power. Uh, so, maybe I don't think we're going to actually get an answer to that. So there we go, that's a fixed Samsung F2318 monitor with uh, 66,000 hours on it and as such it's so dark and dim that it's entirely outclassed by a not very bright laptop monitor. Still, we have saved it from the scrap heap for another while at least. It's uh, certainly got some left to give but uh, the brightness of this panel really is path pathetically low. It's uh, probably under a hundred candler per square meter. Uh, it's certainly nowhere near the 248 that this thing did out of a box. So yeah, eh, not really a victory, but hey, it works. It's got two DVIs. I'm sure it'll find a use somewhere. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy yourself. All right, hang on to your hats. I just couldn't uh, resist just uh, slapping the Spider 4 on this thing. And it is incredibly dark. In fact, the brightness level measures at 50 candela per square meter. 
that is ridiculous. That's like... Uh, I haven't seen a monitor that dark in quite some time. I have a good thing though is it actually it can hit a decent 6500k white point if you crank the colors to something ridiculous. Those are the color settings we're using to achieve 6500k white. So the, the way these C CTFLs work is the, the older they get, the less blue they get. So you, you can quickly just gauge how, gauge how worn out one is by seeing how much blue you need to achieve a certain color temperature and this thing. Perhaps it's got those 66,000 hours because that is a lot of blue and very little light. And there we have a report on it after fiddling around a bit. So this performance is really rather not good in any way, shape or form. Same for the actually decent over 1000 to 1 contrast ratio. But it can just barely push over 2 in gamma if we just crank the contrast and set it to the highest gamma setting and the color temperature has just drifted off of 6500k again. So yeah, this thing is never going to be accurate again unless those backlight tubes are replaced and uh, that's not happening. So, uh, decent black levels, we've got to give it that. Uh, but something I haven't noticed to make it even a bit more insulting we have a dead pixel, which is entirely out of focus, because it's so dark. There we go. A dead pixel stuck on white in the top corner of a display. This thing is not in good shape. But still, it works I guess.